Welcome ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. Linux Mint 21 will be a new LTS series of the popular desktop Linux distribution based on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. Together with Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon 5.4 make its debut on the in-house market. Everything you need to know about Linux Mint 21 is now in the report. Stay tuned. Linux Mint builds on Ubuntu LTS releases and brings a Mint Major version for each Ubuntu LTS version, which is then refreshed every six months with Linux Mint point releases. The Ubuntu LTS base remains unchanged for the point releases. Linux Mint also appears as an alternative Debian edition, LMDE for short. The Ubuntu edition comes with three desktops, XFCE, Mate and the in-house Cinnamon desktop, which we take a closer look at in this video. What's new? Ubuntu 22.04 base, Linux kernel 5.15, Cinnamon 5.4, XFCE 4.16, Mate 1.24, new Mint upgrade utility, improved OS proper setup in conjunction with grub updates, Ubuntu's out of memory daemon is thus replaced by OS proper, Lumen replaces Blueberry as Bluetooth Manager. XViewer supports WebP image format. Improvements to the TimeShift interface. And much more. As a classic LTS distribution, Linux Mint follows the static versioning of Ubuntu LTS. That means the packages statuses are largely frozen and there are mostly security updates. Exceptions are Cinnamon, Firefox or Thunderbird. Linux Mint 21 is only available for 64-bit hardware. The Debian package is used as the native package format, which is supplemented by Flatpak. The primary package manager is APT. The potential target group consists primarily of desktop users. This is what Linux Mint focuses on with great success. The distro is ready to go and comes with everything you need on the desktop hands. Newcomers benefits from that because they typically not yet be familiar with the usual programs and are given a hand and equipped with a sensible selection. Keep in mind, useful programs means there is no bloodware or crapware pre-installed. Let's take a look at a system measurement. My system currently occupies 8.6 GB of the disk. The initial benchmark value in the RAM consumption is around 840 MB. Numbers of installed packages after the first start 2128. Currently, Cinnamon Desktop 5.4.8 is rolled out as newest release. Cinnamon is a traditional desktop that nowadays no longer comes along with incredible design or unconventional operating concepts, but rather stuffy and tough that invites you to get the work done. It's productive desktop that focuses on features and operability, not gimmick. So if you have used Windows 7 or Windows 10, the desktop will not seem unfamiliar to you, even if some optical gimmick in Windows that shows you messages or other things are absent here. It simply doesn't exist. It's about reliability and consistency. So is it that Cinnamon has been visually very similar for generations. Is it bad if you work with it? I don't think so. And if not, you can also customize Cinnamon. This can be done in the settings under the theme section. Let's take a look. Here you can set the color nuance as well as whether and surface should be kept generally light or dark. If you are not so tired to be a Windows-like interface and you would like to be a touch macOS, then you can move the bottom bar up and install the Plank dock. That would also be possible with little effort. And let's have a look what we've got here. You can change the icon colors. You can change the application theming with light and dark and also with different colors. And you can change the desktop theme. Let's have an example. Let's make here dark purple and here dark purple and of course here dark purple and now you see you have here purple icons 
in general a dark theme for your applications. And if you open the menu, you see it's purple hoovered. And here is also some purple hoover effect. Let's check the pre-installed software. We've got Linux kernel 5.14, browser Mozilla Firefox, email client Mozilla Thunderbird, office package LibreOffice, software container Flatpak. General pre-installed software. As we can see, Linux Mint remains true to its path and continues to do so. The deal between Linux Mint and the Mozilla Foundation benefits because Firefox will continue to be provided in the Debian package format. I love that Linux Mint remains loyal to Firefox and Thunderbird. At Linux Mint, it is common for desktop use to come with what you need. So there are certain components like Office, Browser, Mail Client and Video Player included, but no games or other exotic stuff. If that is not enough for you, you will find plenty of supplies at the App Store called Software Manager. Both Debian and Flatpak software packages covered here. Flatpaks are grouped below in a separate button. You'll find it here. Otherwise, you'll find largely the same as Ubuntu 22.04. Linux Mint is one of the most suitable distros for the Linux desktop, if you ask me. Why? Very clear focus on the desktop, on stability, continuity and focus on operability. That means Linux Mint is stable and ready to go when you need it. The Cinnamon desktop may no longer be the revolutionary desktop it once was. How should it always be like this? There always comes a point at which only separatists are improved. In return, there is a consistent desktop experience that is maintained at consistently high level. It's ready when you need it. That's how it should be. The X apps carried by the Linux Mint project are supplementary helpers that can also be used on other distros. The latest addition is TimeShift, the backup software that can take rollback system snapshot either via rsync or in conjunction with the ButterFS file system. The XFCE and Mati editions also benefits from this even if these desktops are only adapted instead of being developed in-house like Cinnamon. Conclusion Linux Mint 21 is a solid advancement. It is based on Ubuntu 22.04 but comes with isolated deviations that are definitely welcome. Apps don't just become unexpected killed just because a demon thinks they are consuming too many resources. Snap is not included and therefore continues to be a canonical in-house development which is primarily only relevant in the Ubuntu cosmos. Flatpak may not be entirely uncontroversial, but it is the standard for software containerization in the FOSS environment. This is where Linux Mint logically fits in. Although Cinnamon 5.4 debuted here, the front-end changes are actually in limit. In other words, if you are not that deep in it, you probably won't notice if you are using Linux Mint 20.3 or 21. At first glance, Cinnamon doesn't give you a significant indicator for this. The main reason for the version jump lies in the Ubuntu 22.04 substructure, which means that the packages of the entire system are also being modernized. It is worthy for that. I had already tested Ubuntu 22.04 and if you're interested in the test, you can find it on my YouTube channel. If you like that basically, then please subscribe to my channel doesn't cost you anything and it's a win-win situation for both of us. If you're using a Linux Mint version of the 20 series, you can look forward to a moderate but steady upgrade. The Ubuntu 22.04 LTS substructure has been on the market for a while and is therefore stable. Cinnamon 5.4 debuted here in Linux Mint but has been available on rolling distros for a couple of weeks, so it's not in the launching state either. So there is good reason for you to take the upgrade when you have the opportunity. That said, there is nothing compelling reason to jump straight to a Linux Mint 21. You can also get a Linux Mint 20.3 kernel 5.15 via the Ubuntu hardware enablement stack. That's just in case you need fresh drivers. I would advise waiting for a few more weeks and then updating your system when it is the right time for it. How did you like Linux Mint 21? When you're doing the upgrade, 
You're welcome to write your opinion in the comments. I did like Linux Mint 21, but I think Cinnamon will need some more polish again soon. It is looking in some kind like a legacy app menu. Maybe some efforts for modernizations are needed here. Not as playful as KDE Plasma, but sort of like, let's say, Windows. Yes, Windows. This is exactly where Linux Mint want to rip off users and a similar but, but familiar interface could perhaps have a supportive effect. Thanks for the kind attention and see you soon. Bye.